I spent evenings sitting inside Watching cable news I've become Satisfied with the idea That there was nothing I could do Then you Started to become restless Started to get engaged Occupy Wall Street set up tents in Zuccotti Park on September 17, 2011 to protest corporate greed and the influence of the big banks and wealthy donors on our political system. Solidarity protests sprung up all over the country, including one in Athens that would have a big impact on local politics. Solidarity This is Tim from Occupy Athens. I think it's fantastic. We have so many cities uh, involved here in Georgia. Obviously, they're not the most uh, liberal or open-minded state sometimes, but we're trying to make it that way. Tim Denson became a commissioner in 2018, and now in 2022, he's at the end of a very successful first term. This is his story and the story of how a local protest movement changed Athens politics forever. Thanks for joining me, Tim. Sure. Happy to be here. So your time as commissioner is coming to an abrupt end in a couple months. And looking back on your first term, I think it's such an interesting story that I wanted to do an episode on it. Full disclosure, you know, I've been heavily involved in everything that we're going to be discussing sure, yeah, today. Yeah, no. So I just want, I might be a bit biased about it. I just want, <laughs> I'm not trying to hide that. I wanted to throw that out there. Right. The Occupy Athens movement began in October, about uh, just 11 years ago. Can you tell me why that happened? Like why there was a local presence for, for like a, the Occupy Wall Street movement, you know, in New York? Athens is a, you know, a metro, a metro area that had a lot of people who were being impacted by the grievances that brought about Occupy in general, you know, vast income inequality. You know, so many of uh, the rich and billionaires were getting so many extra benefits and loopholes made for them while working class people struggled just to get by. I can say what spoke to me about the Occupy movement, even more than those social justice and economic justice issues, was the very uh, creative ideas behind the protests. We're going to occupy space as part of the protest. It was a very communal, populist kind of kind of thing. And you know, it was it was all supposed to be one day. I remember there was supposed there was a, an organizing meeting where they I saw it on Facebook, you know, that's like, hey, come make signs. We're going to have a one day Occupy protest of solidarity. The next morning, our plan was the, I want to say it was like 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. We're supposed to come out, and I had work that day. But I was like, I'm going to get up early and come out before I have to go to work. And I came out, and there was probably like 80 of us by the time I left. It was, you know, quite a few people. I was like, okay, this is a lot more people were coming and going. And, uh, and I had to go to work, and I went to work. But when I was at work, I was just still so excited from the energy and the people were coming. And, and there was talk of us doing, uh, you know, a meeting that night. And possibly having a dinner that night. And it was like, it was, the, it was starting to grow. And so I was very excited at work and I decided like, all right, my shift is over. I'm driving back down there. And I came back down here and stayed late into the night. What, what, what's y'all's main long-term or short-term goal? We want our voices heard and we want there to be dialogue. We want the corruptive role of money and power in politics to be, to be discussed. The first step is discussion, and you need to have that between, like, enough of the public as possible. And that involves everybody being well informed of the facts, and then they're discuss and then discussing their opinions based on the real facts. Over those next few uh, days, weeks, and months, I uh, spent many nights out here, sleeping out here. Spent countless hours talking and learning with individuals really growing my own political understanding, my own understanding around social justice, racial justice, economic justice. It really turned to me, and I think a lot of other people, into a bit of a, uh, you know, an informal school on politics and economics and everything. And it was just completely life-changing to me. 
and it, it, it showed me that like I can do something, even if it's small, I can do something. And I felt very empowered from that, especially whenever I felt maybe solidarity for like the really first time as I like all of a sudden linked up with all these people who most of them I'd never known before in my life. And we started having these like real, sincere, genuine conversations about, you know, what was wrong with the world and what we think needed to change and how we could fix it. So. Eventually, Occupy Athens started focusing on local issues instead of national ones. Um, tell me about how that transition occurred. Like, what were some of the first local issues that you got involved in? Yeah, that, that, I think that's one of the more interesting things that happened. You know, we were definitely focused on national politics, national economics. Simultaneous to this, there was, I think what started out as a very separate movement happening was protests and organizing against a downtown Walmart, which would have been just down this street about half a mile. And while Occupy didn't really take a stance specifically on the development as much, definitely took a stance on some of the quote unquote backdoor meetings, you know, closed door meetings that, that, that were going on around it, and some of the questionable things that helped bring it about and which also helped kill this thing called Project Blue Heron, which was gonna be a big river district redevelopment thing that was gonna be more community focused. There was a big rally at City Hall against this development again, which Occupy spoke, and which we had all decided that we were going to occupy City Hall. And so I, uh, me and other organizers stood on the steps of City Hall announcing that we we're going to occupy City Hall. This Walmart development is only a symptom of a larger problem. Corruption in our local, state, and national government and the tendency for those governments to side with corporate interests over the interests of the people. While State League was greeted with open arms in the mayor's office, the people of our city had vital information hidden from them behind closed door meetings and were silenced when trying to speak their minds to the mayor and commissioners. I am proud to say that Occupy Athens, acting alone and totally separate from People for Better Athens, will be occupying City Hall until they agree to hold a series of town hall meetings with the purpose of gathering input from people of this town about the Steely Project. But really, the pivot point here was the police were called, threatened to arrest all the, all the protesters, even after they were told that they could stay. And soon after that, uh, the mayor put on the agenda of one of the committees a urban camping law that was going to outlaw people from being able to camp downtown. So, so do, you, do you think this law was targeted at Occupy? Completely. Or, or, or was it more like, um, do you think it was also like against just trying to get rid of the homeless population? It, it, well? I think it was definitely looked at as like one of those things that could do both issues. Two birds and one stone. I think for the current government at that time. And, and this was Mayor Nancy Denson. This was Mayor Nancy Denson. And there definitely were urban camping laws being passed in other places, including Atlanta, that was uh, making it very difficult for the homeless population to be able to even sleep anywhere without breaking the law and being arrested. We saw, I think, a responsibility there that we helped bring about that reaction. Yet the people who were really gonna be hurt by that law were gonna be people, house, unhoused people who are struggling. So I think we felt, felt a real responsibility to fight that, that law. And so to do so, we had to really engage with how local government works. Myself and other folks started going to not only the mayor and commission meetings, but the committee meetings where they're discussing this, finding out what the rules of engagement and process were with those meetings, how Robert's Rules of Order happened, how public comment worked, and how we could skirt around those rules did a lot of organizing work around that and we successfully stopped that law. And to me, that success um, was really, I think, what gave the energy for myself and all the other Occupy organizers to really go to that next level. And we all just started learning these skills. We figured things out as we screwed up and discovered new ideas and... So you're saying like, yeah. as you learned all these skills and knowledge about how to interact with the local government, you decided that, hey, I, I could use this for more than just the urban camping law. I, I could apply this to transit advocacy. I, I could totally. apply this to living wages advocacy. We started getting a little bit of, of notice and we were, you know, I think a little more impact and, and we realized what potential was there. Before he became a commissioner, Tim ran for mayor in 2014 against incumbent Nancy Denson. No relation. Most of the things that happen that we see that we work on as a commission and stuff in local government, it's tons of little things constantly, but they all kind of add up. I mean, everything from uh, 
our benches downtown no longer have unnecessary poles down the middle that were being used just to try to make it more uncomfortable for people to lay down, take a nap, take a rest if they needed to. Mayor Nancy Denson was very conservative for a Democrat, but she was running unopposed. And that's why Tim says he decided to give her a challenge. Did you think that you could win? Or if not, why did you decide to run? Because you were, you know, an unknown um, candidate at that point. Yeah, you know, I think whenever we launched the mayoral campaign, you know, everything we were doing at that point was somewhat a form of protest. The whole idea was that if nobody ran against Mayor Nancy Denson, that I would, and nobody else threw their hat in. And so I think we used the opportunity to not only try to win that campaign, which I definitely ran to win, but knowing that if I didn't, at least we're bringing these issues up to the forefront that needed to be brought up, talking about that there was a lot of other solutions that weren't being explored. And we realized, I think kind of going into it, it was like, oh, we can use this as a movement building entity, which we did, you know, channeling all of that momentum, uh, all the volunteers, all of the platform and research for policy, using that all to go into and create Athens for Everyone, the political nonprofit that we that we formed basically immediately out of that, you know, my, um, my, my speech at the, you know, at at the end of the campaign was basically the launching speech of Athens for Everyone. This campaign wasn't about me. This campaign was about everyone else in this community. And in that manner, it doesn't matter that I have less votes. It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter that Nancy will have four more years. Because Nancy's gonna have to deal with me and the thousands of other people who voted to have an Athens for everyone. And your platform during that run included some very big topics like strive for a living wage for all Athenians, guarantee access to pre-K education for all children, encourage the spread of affordable housing, and then some more focused ones like Sunday bus service, zero fare service. Legalizing backyard chickens was on your platform, and the end decriminalizing cannabis and providing digital recordings of all public meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so the big issues we're kind of still working on, I think, but the more focused stuff has mostly all been accomplished by this point. And do you think something like fare free bus service would have happened if not for your mayoral run? Uh, absolutely, I don't think I don't think it would. We very much normalized it over the many years. I mean, I think it, I think it also shows that like I think fare free bus service is probably the the biggest, most impactful thing that we that we pulled off that really I think is a complete shift in the way that we think about public services and such. You know, I don't think that would have happened unless if we hadn't kept with it. And sure that was announced on my platform back in 2013. We finally really got it done in 2020. So I mean it took seven years. It took seven years of like pretty consistent working and pushing on it from all different levels, uh, outside from like public advocacy from the policy research and stuff that was done with Athens for Everyone to, of course, the other integral part, what, which was being me being on the commission and being on the commission with uh, a lot of other willing commissioners and a mayor who was willing to take this on and really try to do it. But even, you know, some of the commissioners who very much laughed and balked and called it crazy before supported it and voted for it because I think we kind of normalized this idea. I also asked about the legacy of the defunct advocacy group Athens for Everyone. What did it accomplish? I don't think there was any way that we could have said that we would have swept uh, those elections with progressives winning across the basically every single candidate that Athens for Everyone endorsed, except for one school board member, won, bringing about a major shift in the way that our local government works. And also, I think a huge part of this is just bringing so much focus onto local government really bringing about a shift that people need to pay attention to local government, that a lot of things can get done here. Not everything. I think sometimes we've maybe shifted too much. Everybody looks for every solution to every problem maybe on the local government, which that's not necessarily there. But we've, we brought a huge spotlight onto City Hall and local government and the fact that people can be engaged with it. People can make demands. People can advocate. So I, I, I think that's the, that's the legacy. Despite the remarkable wins in 2018, for Tim's first two years, Progressives were still a minority on the commission. Even so, they were able to end cash bail for local ordinances. They resolved to achieve 100% clean energy by 2035, 
They instructed police to accept passports as ID at traffic stops to protect the undocumented community. And they reacted quickly during the COVID-19 pandemic to set up a shelter in place and mask ordinance. So tell me about those first two years. Um, was it like you expected being on the commission, like when you finally got there? Um, in, in, in some ways, you know, it was definitely a, a, a ton of work and there was definitely a big learning curve. But yeah, I'm definitely proud that we were able to get some stuff done. We weren't even recording all of our meetings. One of the things that I was doing during my campaign and stuff, and even after the campaign with Athens for Everyone, is we were going to the work sessions and recording them and streaming them online because our local government wouldn't do it. And I can tell you this, like now, now being on the commission, it is insane that our work sessions were ever not broadcast and recorded because so much gets done there. And then in 2020, uh, Deborah Gonzalez, a, a very progressive BA, was elected district attorney. And Carol Myers was also elected to the commission, as well as Jesse Houle uh, got on there as well. They became commissioner under very unfortunate circumstances. But, but, but yeah. Houle is a progressive. Uh, all those candidates are very progressive. And so, so at this point, uh, progressives were kind of in charge of the local government for, I think, one of the first times ever, possibly. I think we really hit a tipping point. We really did where we had the the power and ability to to really pursue some of those bigger things that we were just a little bit short of before and uh that was a, that was a game changer so yeah i think i think once they came on the commission that was really a, a a big pivot point where we had the leverage to get some of these things done that we've been trying to work on for a while just couldn't get them over the finish line over the past two years commissioners have begun programs like fair free bus service a police alternative for 911 responses, living wages for all county employees, an inclusionary zoning policy to encourage affordable housing, an eviction prevention program, an anti-discrimination ordinance, a human relations commission, the Linentown Resolution, and a police oversight committee. What are you most proud of having accomplished? Um, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to say. I mean, I think, I think I would say the eviction prevention program because it's been I think one of the most directly impactful programs with just like four months under its belt it had already kept 270 families from being evicted from their homes and that's a real massive direct impact and improvement that happens to those families and that has improvements for the entire community too um, and the other one I say would definitely be fare free public transit but also like a uh, public art we have seen a massive increase in the amount of public art that has popped up in our community and a, and a massive increase in how much we started funding uh, public art here. And not just so that we create public art for everybody to enjoy, that's a big part of it, but also as a way to be able to economically support our artists that we have here in Athens. Park County. And uh, getting back to affordable housing real quick, mm -hmm. um, so, so I know it's true that that eviction prevention program has helped a lot of people, yeah. um, but I also think that the need is possibly greater now than it has been in the past. What else can we do going forward? Like, have you really exhausted the options at the local level on that? Oh, or is there anything else that we can do? Not, not, not at all. A lot of this goes back to, all the way back to the recession. That uh, during the recession, if you look at our growth of our community, plus the growth of our housing stock, number of housing units that were being produced, it was keeping up at a very uh, comparable ratio up until the recession. And then after the recession hits, the production of our housing units dropped pretty pretty far down and never has picked back up to the level that it needs to for population of growth. So you have that factor. You have the pandemic, you have the student the student housing, plus that Athens just has become a very uh, highly desirable place to live, plus short-term rentals. You add all of these things together. And when the pandemic happened, and as we look now with inflation happening, we kind of had this perfect storm for this to happen. And so for us to tackle this, it, it requires a lot of different tools. It requires us to regulate short-term rentals. It requires us to find ways to increase the production of housing in general, but of course, specifically when it comes to affordable housing, that we, we need to be hitting all these different approaches. It's not, it's not one or nothing. We have a lot of things that still need to be changed. Our land use map has to be updated. And the biggest thing that we have to change when it comes to the commission, which I'm very worried about, is the mindset of commissioners. Density is not bad. Density does not mean low quality of life. 
I'm sure you would like to continue this work on affordable housing, um, but, but you and some of the other progressive commissioners are not running for election um, this year, or you're not able to. Um, so would you like to talk about why that's the case? Yeah, I have some enemies in the wrong places. You know, there was a very intentional redistricting effort to get uh, myself and Commissioners Russell Edwards and Melissa Link unable to run for re-election. The people who did this are, are the Republican legislators yes. at the state level, people like Houston Gaines or, or Bill Cowser. Do you think they're threatened by you? Like, like wh why, why did they do this? Well, I can say that they definitely don't respect democracy very much, but and I guess that's not big news. Is there something specific that they didn't like that you did? Well, well enough. Uh, I mean, I can say, like, I, I, I spoke to Houston Gaines, who was the sponsor of the bill, and he told me that Melissa Link was mean to him. Uh, he told me that Russell Edwards didn't respect him. This is all paraphrasing, of course, but basically. And that I didn't respect him, and that I was never, I never was willing to work with him. I never called upon him to work for things. Spoiler alert, every time we met to talk about policy, I called him every single time. He never reached out to me once. So what do you think it is? Um, what, what, what is oh, it? Oh, I, I, I think it's, I think it's politics. And the way they drew the maps, they were drawn in ways to help but try to open the door up for conservatives to get in there. You know, to me, it's just unfortunate that, uh, you know, I have political differences with Houston and definitely not always happy with what he does, oftentimes not happy. But you never put your own personal vendettas, personal things over the, the needs and the choices of the community. I think that was just pretty disrespectful to the athens County kind of community. You know, I plan on using the next four years to, to serve and work on the school board and, and bring good things there, but also to help organize our community back to be able to have the you know the power to to work for the majority rather than just a uh, a vocal conservative minority who uses gerrymandering and other tricks to try to bring about their own power is there anything that you're still working on uh, in the in the next uh, two and a half months that you'd like to get accomplished before before you breathe from office <laughs> yes I am busting my ass to get a few things done before I'm out doing tons of work on housing I'm hoping to have recommendations for short-term rentals out of committee. These are things like Airbnbs and BNBOs. Airbnbs, right, so that we can put a regulation on uh, likely how many of them there can be, where they can be, how they can operate, and that they will have to be paying their taxes and fees and such to the, to the county, like any other hotel or any other business has to. And then also working very hard to get some recommendations on accessory dwelling units so that people could be able to have say, small apartments or uh, in-law suites in their backyard built to, again, expand our housing stock. Yeah, there's still a lot that's going on that I'm hoping that we'll get done. All, a lot of these different projects we've had going on for years, I unfortunately won't be on the commission to see them all get finalized, but I'm hoping they will be done uh, sooner rather than later. Okay, well, thanks for so much for coming on my show. Yeah, uh, you know, thank you and thanks the Athens community for giving me a chance and hopefully it'll give me a chance again in the future. What I've learned from all of this is that moving our community in a progressive direction is a long-term project. But real change is possible if we stand together and demand it. Bye for now.